In this video, we're going to take a look at the RSI, the Relative Strength Index Oscillator, and how we can use it in a couple of ways to generate trading signals. Hello, I'm David Jones. Welcome back uh, to this latest video in my series with Trading 212, uh, looking at technical analysis and charting. Last time around, we introduced the idea of oscillators, typically shown at the bottom of the chart, and uh, give us overbought and oversold signals. Um, Today we're going to look at something in a bit more depth. We're going to look at the RSI, the Relative Strength Index. It's been around since um, the late 70s, so it's probably uh, one of the more established oscillators. It's pretty simple, and I'm all in favour of keeping stuff simple, um, but there are a couple of ways we can use this to generate uh, potential trading signals. So first of all, before we look at how it works in the real world, um, let's just go through the formula, how this thing is actually calculated. So for those of you who are fans of the maths, here's the calculation for the RSI. So the RSI is 100 minus 100 over 1 minus RS. So what is RS in this equation? Let me explain, because this is really at the core of the RSI. So RS is the average of X number of days up divided by the average of X number of days uh, down. So to put that into plain language, let's say we're using a 10-day RSI. So it looks at, over the last 10 days, how many days did the market finish up? And it adds the total points gained on those up days and divides it by 10. So we have an average of the points gained when the market went up. And of course, the inverse applies down here. If out of the last 10 days, the market went down for four of them, the number of points lost in those four days are added up and divided by 10, and we end up uh, with an average, okay? And once this gets plotted on the chart, we always have a value between zero and 100%. So there's the formula for the RSI. You don't need to remember it. There's not gonna be a test at the end. Uh, most software will just produce this and put this on the chart um, automatically. But let's have a look, first of all, how it works in the real world. On a real market, looking at just the overbought, oversold signals and um, how good or how bad they might have been. So let's start with a nice clean chart. We've got pound US dollar zero spread, daily candlestick. Each candlestick represents a day's worth of trading. Nothing else on the chart. Let's add our RSI. So we access the RSI from the indicators tab up here. We can click down. We can choose oscillators and scroll down and pick relative strength index. But it's also in the most popular because it is one of the most popular. Click on relative strength index. Here we go. So it defaults to the, the textbook version, 14-day RSI. Me, I like a 10-day RSI because it's two weeks. We can change the overbought, oversold areas. For now, let's, let's stick with the textbook, 70 and 30%. Click on confirm and the RSI gets plotted on our chart. Let's just uh, stretch that up. So traditionally, with the RSI, we always have a value between 0 and 100%. Anything above 70%, so above this line here, the market is said to be overbought. Anything below 30%, so down here, the market is said to be oversold. So when the RSI stretches into overbought, like just up here, pound US dollar, back at the end of November was the last overbought signal, it's a suggestion that maybe uh, the strength has gone a little bit too far. And if we jump back to some of the, the oversold signals, probably the, the best, the truest one we had was down here, it's suggesting that, that maybe the market has gone uh, down too far and is due a bounce back. It's not perfect, like all these indicators, none of them are perfect, but it gives us a way of um, taking the temperature of the market. Now, if I change this to an hourly chart, my RSI is still there, of course, but now, rather than looking at the last 10 days, it's looking at the last 10 hours of price. So we have a, a much choppier RSI. Okay, so obviously if you change the period of the chart, you're gonna get different signals because you're looking at, at different price data. Let's go back to a daily chart for now. So at the moment, at the time of recording this, the RSI was, was pretty much in the middle, trading around the 55% mark. Okay, but it's at the extremes. If we're using overbought, oversold, uh, where people will be looking for the RSI to try and confirm maybe what their reading of the chart or the news or the fundamentals is telling them. So looking to sell when the market or when the RSI approaches overbought and then looking to buy when it approaches or dips into oversold is one strategy. But um, because markets do move around, obviously, you do get quite a few overbought, oversold signals and they're maybe not as reliable as another way 
of using the RSI and that's looking at the idea of divergence. Don't forget the RSI is just a calculation based on what the market's been doing. It's not some magic formula. So it's based on what's going on in the market. Broadly speaking, it will follow the market. But when it doesn't follow the market, that's when we can get uh, different signals. And this is divergence. So let's take a look at that uh, again in the real world. I think this idea of divergence is a powerful one. Um, clearly, as markets move around, we are going to get overbought, oversold signals. Um, it's, just, it's the nature of market volatility. But these um, divergence signals are a lot less common, so arguably a bit more reliable. The best example I can see here, they don't happen that often, like I say, but we go, let's go back in time to June. So you can see this is pound US dollar again. The market slips lower, rallies, but slips lower again. Okay, so we've got lower lows. But look at what the RSI is doing. Hits a low, market bounces back, drags the RSI up, hits a low again, but we've got higher lows. So this is a suggestion, true as it turned out, that maybe uh, this weakness is running out of steam. So this is known as bullish divergence. Let me see if I can find an example of bearish divergence. So I flipped this chart to uh, dollar yen now. So dollar yen, zero spread, again a daily chart, again 10 day RSI. So we have the usual overbought, oversold, uh, so it goes on. It's not worked too badly. The last oversold signals uh, were down here for dollar yen, third week in November. But what I'm looking for is bearish divergence where the market has pushed to a high, pushes a little bit higher. Look what the RSI is doing. So the RSI blips briefly into overbought, market sells off, drags the RSI lower, but the RSI pushes higher. No, sorry, the market pushes higher and the RSI, look, we've got our lower high. So that's a suggestion that maybe the strength is running out of steam. And again, in this case, it worked pretty well. So it's where the market pushes out to fresh highs for the up move, but the RSI doesn't follow it. That's our bearish divergence setup. So there's bullish and bearish divergence. That personally is my favorite way of using the RSI. These signals don't occur very often, so you have to be a little bit patient, which is a problem, I think, uh, for a lot of us. But it does give us, I think, some obvious levels if we're following these signals uh, to put the stops in. But, um, I mean, let's talk about that, because this is all about using these to trade. It's not um, using them academically. You know, we want to have an idea, well, where should we get in and where should we get out? And I think the good thing with the divergence, if we look at bullish divergence, we have two higher lows. So if we're buying because there's bullish divergence, we have two obvious levels to place our stop loss beyond. Because by definition, if the divergence is going to work out, bullish divergence, um, the market shouldn't take out uh, that prior extreme low. So we have a very sensible point, I think, to place the stop loss. So potential low risk, but a potential high reward trade. So that's the RSI. Um, it is the most simple one, I think, out there when it comes to oscillators. We'll look at a few more um, in the weeks to come. But there is no perfect system. There's no magic system that's right all the time. So I think the RSI is as good an oscillator as any of them, particularly if you're looking at this, this idea of divergence, because it does filter out, I think, so many of just the normal choppy signals. Um, but try it out, see what you think. If you have any comments or questions, leave us a message uh, in the comments down below. Uh, we do read them all. If you like the video, click on the thumbs up. And as usual, uh, if it's the first time you've seen this, we do lots of different videos uh, on gold, oil, uh, foreign exchange pairs, breaking through all the jargon in financial markets, all this sort of stuff. So regular videos on a weekly basis. If you're not subscribed, click on the subscribe button there and you'll get notified when our next video gets uploaded. But for this week, from me, David Jones and Trading212, we'll leave it there and I hope you have a good trading week.